Carla Boswell Lewis, Director for Strategic Educational Consultancy Services, where my only mission is to empower you educators. It is marvelous me, and I am so grateful and just overjoyed by the responses received from the Google form that was created. And so this week, based on the feedback, I'll be looking at creating rubrics. I know this is a time of the year when we close out school. And so we may have different projects and different things that we want to assign to the students. And so for someone to ask at this time, how do we create rubrics? I think that is an awesome and insightful educator and I am just overjoyed to share with you. So yes, creating rubrics. Why rubrics? Why do we need to create rubrics? Let's get right into that. So rubric, what exactly is that? Simply put, educators, a rubric is a scoring tool that explicitly represents the performance expectations for an assignment or piece of work. Further, it divides the assigned work into component parts and provides clear descriptions of the characteristics of the work associated with each component at varying levels of mastery. So you are seeing on your screen here an oral presentation rubric and you would have seen the criteria to your left hand side. So there is display, there is organization, there is eye contact, there is voice. And so there are descriptors to the top which says, oh, not there yet, get in there, three, well done, you've got it, four, wow, simply amazing. Now, when you look at the rubric, it, it, it may not be clear, but you are seeing where there are different components that are assigned. And so if the student is not there as yet, the student will receive one for display. But if they're getting there based on what would have been recorded or asked of them, then they would get two. If it is that they have done so well, well done, you know, they have completed some of the, the specific areas and then they would receive three. And if they're simply amazing by completing all the tasks, then they would have received four. You assign the score to your right hand and your tally at the bottom. So that really is what a rubric is. Now, there are benefits of using a rubric. One, it helps the instructor to communicate expectations to students and assess student work fairly and efficiently. So the educator or the instructor doesn't have to second guess what is it that they are going to give to the students, right? And even second guessing, that it will be clear so the students will know what is it that they are going to be assessed on. The second benefit is that it provides a student with informative feedback on their strengths and weaknesses and prompt students to reflect on their own work. So it, it guides them, it lets them know what, what possible marks can I receive based on what I have done. It allows them to be judgmental with the work that they have done too. So they say, okay, I don't think I did this part so well because I did not understand it. So maybe I receive a two here or so. So it, it, it programs the brain into thinking and carrying out the activity as it should. Now, in order to understand or to utilize the best suited um, approach when doing rubrics is that you must have an idea of the different types of rubrics that exist. So we're going to be looking at four main types of rubrics, but usually it is boiled down to two, which will look at the analytic and the holistic but we will be going through all four. So the first one is an analytic rubric. What is this? If you're seen on the screen, it is a grid. It resembles a grid 
with the criteria for a student product listed in the leftmost column and with levels of performance listed across the top row up for using numbers and or descriptive tags and then the cells are within the center of the rubric they may be left blank or they may contain descriptions like i showed you in the previous slide of what the specified criteria look like for each level of performance when scoring with an analytic rubric each of the criteria is scored individually so let's look at it you are seeing here where there are some marks assigned to the left this is the criteria organization content style total score and then at the top you are seeing what is it that they will receive um, in terms of the criteria laid out if they're below expectation no apparent organization evidence is not used to support assertions they get between zero to two marks satisfactory it outlines again exemplary and they they get the marks as they go along right so that would be it for the analytic um, rubric what it looks like all right then we are going to move on to look at the advantages and disadvantages of such a rubric because each rubric has its own advantages and disadvantages. The first advantage of the analytic rubric is that it provides useful feedback on areas of strength and weaknesses and the criterion can be weighted to reflect the relative importance of each dimension. What is it that you want to accomplish? It can provide that. The disadvantage though, and I will tell you, um, is that it takes more time to create and use because you have to think about the descriptors that you are going to put in at each um, level. Unless each point for each criterion is well defined, if you are using, if different persons are going to be scoring the students, then they may not arrive at the same score because it is going to give some level of um, subjectivity. All right, so you may not all receive the same um, grade, which um, is understandable because we are working in a different um, context. All right. Um, the second type of rubric that we are going to look at is referred to as a developmental rubric. Now, the developmental rubrics, they are designed to answer the question, to what extent are students who engage in our programs or services developing this skill, ability, value, etc. So, what it does, um, it doesn't so much test performance but what the students are able to see based on the stage that they're at and so this may be linked to a learning a developmental theory um to 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 get marks for the students so i know in um the kindergarten and the primary um at some levels they at the end of each school term or year there's a developmental rubric that they send home with each child to say child is able to um to use gross um motor skills or fine motor skills able to um take basic care of of themselves hygiene and so on knows how to sit knows how to speak to teacher so there are different things that um, would be done in developmental rubrics as as said earlier this is a rubric that doesn't test performance but what the students should be able um, to do now the advantage of this developmental rubric is that it is useful when the goal of evaluation is to determine the level of development as said earlier rather than the quality of a final product however this the disadvantage is and you can only imagine that it is more difficult to design and developmental rubric requires a close tie between assessment criteria and the theory of development so you will have to match based on what you're assessing you have to match it to a theory of development so i know too for student teachers they operate somewhat with a developmental 
um, rubric when they go to teach and practice what the student teacher should be able to do manage his or her class without um, total dependence on class teacher able to write charts able to communicate so it is basically and, and depending on the a the year that you are in so if you're in first you're not going on observation it, it, it is less but when you get to your fourth year where you're closing out on teaching practice two and in a practicum two then it is going to be at a higher level because at this stage you now you should be ready to go out so um, those are examples that I can readily think of as it relates to the developmental um, the developmental rubric all right so we're going to be looking at the third rubric the third rubric is the holistic rubric now the holistic rubric consists of a single scale with all criteria to be included in the evaluation being considered together so there's going to be like for example clarity organization mechanics and so on that will be utilized now in the holistic rubric as you're seeing um it's it just gives a total as said a, a total grade but the total grade is going to be dependent on all of the criteria that is being mixed in so for example if you're exemplary the maximum points you can get will be 24 if you're exemplary you have to do all that is listed there to be proficient all that is listed there acceptable what is there if you fall within that then you are going to be acceptable if you're weak based on it's it's there as well all right so that's the holistic um, rubric it, it's a single scale with all the criteria to be included in the, in the evaluation being put together and then a grade is assigned now the advantage is that um, there's emphasis on what the learner is able to demonstrate rather than what she or he cannot do so it's not looking at what they cannot do but what they are able to demonstrate the disadvantage it does not provide specific feedback for improvement and when students work at varying levels spanning the criteria points it can be difficult to select the single best description because what you will find happening when you use this um, rubric is that because all the things are listed there if the student say based at um, for base for based on, on on week let me just pull it up what if in acceptable it's only two are three out of the four that is being displayed what do you do where do you fall you are not weak but you did not master all and so the points you know the, uh, the the allotment there will be a challenge so that is why it speaks to the fact that it may be difficult to select the best description now um finally we are going to be looking at the checklist rubric and i know this is a rubric that um, many educators may be familiar with or practice. Now, the checklists are a distinct type of rubric where there are only two performance levels that is possible. So it's either yes or no, able to, not able to, all right? And the che checklists, sorry, tend to be longer than other types of rubrics since since each aspect of performance you are looking for in students where performances essentially become its own criterion so based on what you're looking for essentially that's what's gonna come out that's what's that is what is going to to be there what you're looking for so it's either going to be yes or no now the the this the advantage of the checklist one is that um, they are generally a simpler and faster way to grade than using a more traditional rubric and it makes the grading clearer to the students so the students are able because it is so simple they're able to just go through and check right and the disadvantage is that um, even though it looks easier it can be a little bit difficult because the performance standard that you're looking for you may not be able to convert it totally to a checklist 
so um, you will have to sit and think a little bit more about what is it that you are going to be be doing um, as you as you put your rubric together so having exposed you to what is a rubric and the different types of rubric we're now going to look at how exactly do you write the rubric how do you come up with a rubric now the first thing is you have to think about what exactly is the task what are you giving to the student does it break down into a variety of different tasks are these tasks equally important? What are the learning objectives for this assignment or task? Because it is not just to just write down something and say, okay, you're giving them a rubric, you're giving them an assignment. What exactly are you assessing the students on? What do you want students to demonstrate in their completed assignments or performances i will say this i think i would have said it in previous videos not sure which one no but you want to make sure that whatsoever you give to the students when you do alternative assessment whatever you give to them it is what you are testing them for and it is age and grade appropriate because many times as educators we get caught up with the whims and fancies of doing a project i will just write down some questions write up some things and give to the students but then it is not at their age level and so you find that or or even their developmental level sad to say where they should be at they are not there because we know we have students like like that you know we have that setting where many different types of learners they should all be at the grade nine level but some are at grade six some are at grade seven and so you as educator you have to be trying to ponder what do i do so you want to ensure that when you give them the the project or whatever you're giving them and you're going to be assigning a rubric to it it must be at their age level because what's the sense of giving them something when they're not going to learn from it it is someone else that is going to assist them all right the second part when you write your rubric you want to do is to look at what might an exemplary student product or performance look like when you say to someone this is an exemplary work done by a student what is it so you have to look at how might you describe an acceptable student product or performance how might you describe work that falls below expectations untidy um uh drawing not labeled um in proper use of grammar and so on you want to be able so you must be able to tell what the exemplary should look like and also what if it falls below what makes it falls below because you have to give account for that when you talk to the students thirdly what kind of feedback do you want to give students on their work or performance do you want or need to give them a grade you have to think about that do you want to give them a single overall grade or different types of grade do you want to give them detailed feedback on a variety of criteria do you want to give them specific feedback that will help them improve their future work so you have to be thinking about these three things all right once again you want to be thinking about you want to be thinking about what exactly is the task what does exemplary looks like and what does um, a word that is not exemplary looks like and you also want to think about the feedback that you want to give to the students about their work and performance so in the future they can improve now one thing that i forgot to put into this um uh, power power um this this powerpoint presentation is that um there's a difference between a scoring guide and a rubric at times as educators we mix it up so i want to create this vivid picture for you to understand the scoring guide is where you provide the students with a task sheet and then you put the grade that they will receive if they complete it beside it so for example you're doing a project on um proper hygiene you want them to do a project on proper hygiene so the first thing you want to ask them to define hygiene 
and you put beside it one mark or two mark you want them to show examples of bad hygiene and good hygiene and you put beside it how many marks they receive for showing the bad how many they receive for showing the good of course you know that these are pictures that they're going to go for so that's a scoring guide where you just give them the questions and the mark that will be assigned but when you think about a rubric a rubric is a little bit more detailed and it gives specific criteria for what is it that you're expecting and at the level at which they perform the grade that they will receive i trust my educator family that this video would have been um, one that you can utilize uh, feel free to put your comments or your questions in the in the chat section below um, don't be afraid to like subscribe and share to those who you know may want this valuable information the information on how to contact me is on my my channel you can follow me on facebook at the same strategic educational consultancy services on instagram and you can direct message me as well at triple three five five one zero or send an email and i will be more than happy to respond and to help you i wish for you a great and successful week as we continue to chart the course for child's month where we're looking at strategic content that will help us to be better educators and to serve our students well god bless you have a great week